Good afternoon and welcome to the Thameside Reporter Sports Show. We're at the Thameside Stadium this week where the pitch is resembling more of a beach here at the start of the off-season. We've got an interview with Curzon Ashton CEO Natalie Atkinson coming up. We'll also be discussing the early ins and outs from our football teams and also be talking about a bit of Speedway. <laughs> Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful day here at the Same Size Stadium, and I'm joined by my Same Size reporter colleague Lee Wilde, standing in for Mark this week. Welcome on the show, Lee. Good to be here. So, we're going to talk about Curzon Ashton to kick off because obviously the season's finished now, and it's finished on a high for the club because the youth team has won a fantastic quadruple, Lee. Yeah, unbelievable for Curzon, isn't it? I mean, it's pretty much unheard of at this level to do the quadruple. I know they've got some fantastic players in the academy here. One in particular, 18-year-old Ollie Thornley. I know he's signed a new contract this week. That is fantastic for the club. He could be he could be a real star for Curzon Ashton coming into the future. Well, that fourth trophy came on Saturday with a 2-0 win over Southport in the Open Cup final. And as we mentioned there, the new team captain, 18-year-old Ollie Thornley, has signed a new contract. He's uh, one of a number of, uh, of, of Curzon Ashton players to have signed new contracts. What a few have also left, Lee? They have, and I mean, the big one is obviously Mike Warburton. He's left to join Stockport, and that's a big loss for this club because he was the one that stepped in and scored quite a few goals when um, Adam Morgan left earlier in the season. I know he's a bit of a fan favourite here at Curzon. So with that youth team quadruple, then the season is at an end for Curzon Ashton, but it's going to be a busy summer off the pitch. And we spoke to CEO Natalie Atkinson earlier today. Yeah, so Natalie, uh, season's finished now for Curzon Ashton as a club and it's ended on a high with the success of the youth team. Yes, and that shows the strength of our youth development programme here at the club, um, right through from the under fives, right through to the under 16s and obviously the youth development programme and the partnership that we have with Tayside College is year on year strengthening the structure we have within the under 18s. Um, it's great for our club, great exposure um, and also shows the strength of the management structure and the coaching structure that we have here at the club. So looking ahead to next season, you're looking for sponsors and you've come up with quite a novel way to do that. Just tell us about that. We have, on Wednesday, we launched uh, a new idea that we've been discussing for a number of weeks. Um, it gives opportunities for a number of companies, businesses um, across Thameside because we want to work with Thameside companies. Uh, there's an opportunity for a business or a company or a person to put in £2,000 and we're having a prize draw at the end of June um, and that could mean that company could go on the shirt, the shorts, the tracksuits, the training kit, um, but also um, pitch side boards and other opportunities um, to advertise their company. And it's not just about advertising the company and saying thank you very much for your £2,000. We want to develop a, a really great relationship with that, with that company and those companies that put into the prize draw. So uh, we will launch that on Wednesday and we're hoping to get as many companies as we can um, to be part of that prize draw. Excellent. And also the fundraising continues to replace this 3G pitch behind us, obviously a popular facility. What events have you got coming up over the summer to, to do that? It does. We're now in that process of um, completing the football development plan and the business plan for the pitch. Um, the application will go to the Football Foundation and the FA in July and we're raising funds week in, week out uh, and that's through the, the great family atmosphere, the family that we have at the club. We've got an event here on the 29th of May, Bank Holiday. Hopefully the weather will be like this. Um, we've got bands on, we've got face painting, we've got bouncy castles, uh, our refreshments and snack bar and bar will be open uh, and it's it's a really good fun day for families to raise money for uh, a much needed replacement of the pitch. So I'll finish off the pitch, I'll finish on the pitch, just say, but off the pitch, still uh, it's going to be a very busy summer for you. Yes, you'd think it would ease off a little bit, but it doesn't for me. Um, it's just still as busy during the off season. Um, obviously, we want to look for that elusive sponsor for all our, not just for the kit, but for the club. It's about a whole sponsor for the club and creating a two-way partnership. Uh, and then it's building up to pre-season, um, which we announced with the start of our first pre-season game on the 18th of July with Oldham Athletic here at the Tameside Stadium. So we are looking for a sponsor for next season. What a great way to go about finding one. Absolutely. I mean, it's brilliant for any club that wants to get involved in the local community. As we know, Curzon Ashton are a community team and they do a lot out there with people in Tameside. And I mean, 
it's quite it's quite a bargain really when you think about what some of the other teams in this league might charge for front of shirt sponsorship. So for more details on that sponsorship uh, competition then at Curzon National you can visit teamsidereporter.com. We'll talk about some uh, ins and outs then at Curzon National because a few players have left including striker Matt Warburton and goalkeeper Hakan Burton. We, uh, uh, there'll be big misses next season. They will, I mean I know Hakan lost his place sort of around the uh, FA Cup run but you don't really want a large turnover at this level do you? It'd be interesting to see who they bring in to replace them, see if they can sort of move up the table this season. Well four players have joined Curzon Ashton in these early stages of pre-season. Midfielder Paul Marshall was the first to join from Alfreton Town and they've also signed Matty Reagan, a defender from Stalybridge Celtic. Scott McCall has joined from Warrington and Salford Steve Housen has also signed for the club. Across the board at Stalybridge Celtic there's also been a, a number of departures, Lee. There has. There's been quite a few left from Stalybridge and I know it's not a surprise. Obviously they've been relegated so a lot of those players have got to make their living in the higher league. The big loss for me is Kieran Dunbar. He's a bit of a colossus in the centre and midfield for Stalybridge and it'd be interesting to see how they replace someone like that. So some of upheaval then it seems at Stalebridge Celtic. Well uh, earlier this week our local sides announced their pre-season fixtures for the summer. Any, uh, any standout ties for you Lee? Yeah there's a few tasty fixtures that I think we'll be looking to take in. Obviously uh, Oldham will be visiting here when they play right, Curzon yeah. Ashton on the 18th of July and just across the borough on the same day Ashton United are taking on Stockport so another big big local rival there. So elsewhere in the borough, Hyde United watched their kit uh, this week in partnership with Mitre. It's on the screen now. Lee, what do you think? As it's a beautiful kit, isn't it? Lovely. It's, it's great to have the tie up with Mitre. Not many teams at this level sort of do that sort of um, uh, merchandising, shall we say. But I think I really like the away kit. Bit of, a, bit of Norwich City inspired. So just talking about women's football or girls football very briefly, Denton Girls FC has joined forces with Hyde United to form Tameside United Girls, a brand new team. Mark Phillip uh, spoke to one of the club's coaches, James Cadwell, about the new venture and you can hear that full 25 minute interview on Tameside Radio tonight at 6 o'clock on the Sporting Spotlight. Well Lee, you're uh, on the show this week and uh, many people watching might know, might not know that you're a big fan of the Bellevue Aces, Speedway. Yeah. So how's the season uh, started for the, for the Aces? I have, I've been trying to get it on this show for weeks. As you know, it's been a great start to the season for Bellevue. We're, um, we're up there at the top and it's also been a good start for our second team, the Colts, who are racing tonight. We've got some great youngsters in that Colts side, uh, three 15 year olds, which is the youngest you can be to ride for that team. And um, it's going to be a good season, hopefully. Hopefully we'll be uh, back up there in the grand final at the end of the season. And it's been a period of relative success for the Aces over the last two years. Reached the grand final the last two years. Do you think they can make it three in a row? I do, I mean I've been watching them for a long time now and this is the first time we've been good so I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it while it lasts. I hope, I hope we can make it to the grand final again. Obviously in Speedway it's a playoff system so you don't get anything finishing top of the league unfortunately and the last two seasons we've fell just short just in the grand final so hopefully this season we'll go all the way and sort of put them grumblings to bed. It's still in the early days of the season. Is there any uh, standout performers in the Aces ranks this year? As always it's got to be Captain Craig Cook. I mean he leads from the front, he's unbelievable and it, it really means a lot to him. In a sport such a speed where riders don't stick around for a long time. It's going into his seventh or eighth season now with the club, which is pretty much unheard of. He's been given the captaincy this year and he's leading from the front, like I said. And you mentioned before the Bellevue Colts are racing tonight against Stoke. Obviously, you'll be there. You're looking forward to it? I am. We've had two we had two Colts meetings up so far this season and both of them have won by 60 points. So I'm hoping for another big score tonight and hopefully we'll get a big crowd because it's beautiful weather, isn't it? So anyone watching and looking for a warm night out at the Colts, how can they just turn up, uh, pay on the gate? Turn up, pay on the gate, half past seven at the National Speedway Stadium in Garland. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us this week. We, uh, next week, Matt will be back and we'll hopefully be at Better Bodies Gym in Denton, where we're hoping to speak to local professional boxer Charlie Schofield. But that's all for this week. Don't forget for a more in depth roundup of all Same Side Sports, you can listen to the Sporting Spotlight on Same Side Radio tonight at 6 o'clock with myself, Lee, and Martin. Uh-huh.